Hello, my beautiful co-creators of the new career. This is Mitzke with another vlog for you. I am here in Bosnia, Herzegovina, with uh, Dr. Sam Osmanegic. Uh, he is the main founder of doing research at, at this beautiful, uh, sacred area. And, uh, well, what I've noticed is that uh, in visiting the places and feeling into it myself, um, the, the emphasis that you put on sharing uh, information about these sacred grounds is uh, coming from two directions. Both the scientific research, because you uh, use uh, professional centers to determine the uh, consistency and the age of the materials that are being found here, but also you are hiring people to research things like electromagnetic fields, the presence of positive and negative ions, and the effects on our health as human beings. And I'm really impressed with the beautiful merging of these two types of research that you bring forth uh, for the public to uh, dive deeper into. And my curiosity is, you have a PhD uh, in mind, civilization and sociology of history. Um, was that interest into the more alternative science? Was it already there for you or how did this begin? Well, first of all, welcome to Bosnia. Thank you. <laughs> this is a, really a special place on the planet. But the beginning of the story is, of course, much further in the past. From my teenage years, I have been reading a lot. 100 books per year. All kinds of aspects of our life, from philosophy, religious, high, tech, high technology, and so on. So I realized that the life is much more than what they teach us in schools. It's not just the physical aspect. We have five physical senses. For example, we can hear from 10 Hz to 20 kHz. But there is a whole new world above 20 kHz. We call it ultrasound. 21, 22, 28, 30, but there are also, uh, besides kHz, uh, gigahertz, and megahertz. The same thing with what we can see. We can see in very limited range. If we could see a little bit more, if we could develop spiritual senses, we could see many other beings and spiritual entities and so on. So I realized that we have to have different approach to this project. For 25 years before I came here to Visoko, before I saw this what everybody called hill, with the, but it, for me, it was four-sided, triangular faces, corners, the same slope, geometry of the pyramid, I took compass, it showed me east, west, north, south, perfect orientation. I knew it was artificial structure. We started our uh, uh, project with the archaeology. We were digging, discovering, discovering rectangular blocks and square blocks, which we analyzed, it was artificially made concrete. Mm -hmm. Wow, we realized we have concrete covering the pyramid. We continued excavation, the moon pyramid, the tumors in Ratan Safai pyramids all together. We discovered underground tunnels. And then we realized archaeology is not enough to explain what we deal with. So we started applying many scientific disciplines. First classical, like uh, Egyptology and Geology and Biology, Pedology, Paleontology, and then high technologies, geosatellite, geothermal, geophysical methods. So it became multi-scientific project, multi-purpose project. But then archaeology and science was not enough. We started bringing experts in energy phenomena, physicists, electrical engineers, sound engineers, telecommunication engineers, mm -hmm. where we realized that pyramids are not only the structures, the construction, but energy machines, because they produce very specific frequency. Through the top of the Bosnian Prima the Sun, we can detect and measure energy beams which is electrical in nature, 28 kilohertz. It is focused and continuous because we measure it during all four seasons. And it goes like this, 
four and a half meter on the ground. As it goes higher, it expands to 20 meters, getting narrow of four and a half, 24 and a half. For physicists, no doubt, they, these were the scalar waves, uh -huh. and they travel quicker than the speed of light. Therefore, they are ideal medium to transport the energy and information in the universe between two cosmic bodies regardless of their distance. So, the first potential purpose of pyramids, we realized, was the communication. Or, the pyramid becomes a communica communication device. So, that was very important for us with the energy aspect. But now, at the time we realized this energy, especially beneficial forms of energy like the best electromagnetism, the best ultrasound frequency of 28 kilohertz, the best extremely low frequency of 7.83 hertz, which is in science called the Schumann resonance, mm -hmm. high concentration of negative ions, all this good stuff we meet and measure in the tunnels, they affect our body. With the absence of bad energies like harmful cosmic radiation, natural radioactivity, geopathogenic rays, no Wi-Fi in the tunnels, no mobile phone signals. In absence of bad stuff, it only good stuff, it affects our health, which is the most precious thing in our life. Mm -hmm. So, we improve our health. No matter which conditions we have, high blood pressure gets normalized. High sugar in the blood, it draws for three or five points. We have people with asthma, they go out after visiting tunnels, they feel so good, they don't need air pump mm. for three or six months. So, we added another aspect, healing aspect. Mm. But then, again, that was not enough, because this energy of the pyramids affects something that we can call our spiritual reality, our mm. spiritual senses. You know, when I was younger, they taught me in school that spirituality means religious. Spirituality has nothing to do with religious or organized religions. Spirituality is development of our spiritual senses. So, we can feel the world beyond our physical reality. Mm -hmm. Physical reality we perceive through our five physical senses. We can see, we can hear, we can taste, we can smell, we can touch. But there are 30 spiritual senses. So, we can feel the energies. We can see other people's auric fields. We can see chakras. We can see how open they are. We can communicate with our thoughts. Telepathy is a spiritual sense. We can move objects with the power of our mind. Telekinesis is a spiritual sense. We can even move through space and the time. Teleportation is a spiritual sense. All we need for teleportation, two things. Techniques, we need to master them. And we need energy field which is strong enough to go through this energy field. Well, guess what? Long time ago, when the pyramids in Bosnia were built, 3,000 years back, the pyramids were energy amplifiers. They would amplify very strong energies of our planet. At that time, our mother planet was much healthier and much stronger. Creating those energy fields, you could move through them. So now we realize that Pyramid energy can affect development of our spiritual senses, mm -hmm. which unfortunately we do not, you know, advance them in our life. Because if somebody has the gift, if they can see the future or the past, if they can heal with the touch, if they can communicate with the thoughts, the society laugh at them. Educational system, media, even family. So they don't develop those senses. But it wouldn't be nice that we can actually move through space and time. Mm. So instead of learning by heart when Napoleon was born, which fights he fought, you simply go through space and time and see what was really happening. So we would become complete persons only when we develop not only our physical side, but also spiritual, and we have them in balance. So our project is becoming a project of at least five aspects. Archaeology, science, energy, healing, and spirituality. It's a completely new approach in the world of Absolutely. archaeology. Yeah. As you probably know, archaeological sites like pyramids in Egypt, or Peru, or China, or Mexico, 
They are jealously guarded by archaeologists and Egyptologists. They do not allow other specialties, energy you know, specialists, geophysical specialists, medical doctors, they don't allow them to come and measure mm. you know, aspects of the pyramid energy. Mm. And they still stick to those old theses that Egyptian pyramids were built by pharaohs and tombs. Wrong. In Egypt, 155 pyramids, not a single one. The mummy was discovered. Mm -hmm. Of course, the mummy is in the Valley of Kings, which is 300 kilometers to the south from the Giza Plateau. What we need here, we need science, scientific arguments, but we need to stay open for other aspects, including spiritual aspects. Yes, and you are clearly making that uh, accessible for people of the world, which is unique at this moment in our time, and I really, really admire it. It is very open, very, very important to stay open. Our project is the only large-scale archaeological project that invites professional and non-professionals to come and join us. Exactly. We call them volunteers. Yeah. People come from all over the world. In the last 10 years, we had 3,650 volunteers from 63 countries. Wow. The 63rd country came this year, that was a guy from New Caledonia. <laughs> I mean, where is New Caledonia? If you start digging here from Bosnia and then you go to the center of our planet, you get on the other side, that's where New Caledonia is, <laughs> in one of the Pacific Islands. So people, you know, when they hear about the Bosnian pyramids, those volunteers, they feel inner call mm. to come here. It is like, you know, they felt the vibration of the Bosnian pyramid energies. And talking about the vibration, I would say yes. Everything in our life is about the vibration. You know, when we hate, we vibrate very low. When we are full of violence, when we are jealous, always low vibrations. But also, when we love, when we have love for the whole world, we vibrate very high. That's what we realize here also. Not only the humans, but things like water. We are discovering water in some of the pyramid tunnels. Mm -hmm. We've done conventional analysis, no viruses, no bacteria, pH is excellent, 7.5. But when we sent our samples to late Dr. Masaru Emoto in Japan five years back, when we got the picture of the molecular structure of the water, it was hexagonal with the crystal-like structures. When you compare it to the water that we drink, the city water, the tap water, or bottled water, that water, no viruses, no bacteria, but why? Because of the chlorine. Mm -hmm. Chlorine is a poison. Fluorides, traces of heavy metals, that's what we drink, energetically dead water. Water from the pyramid tunnels, unfiltered, it vibrates very high, beautiful structure, meaning the vibration is becoming the key in our life. We are what we think, we are what we eat, we are what we drink. Mm -hmm. And what is the purpose of the life? You know, on one of the blocks, we discovered several runic symbols. One of them was symbol for joy. When you think about the life in the 21st century, the purpose is not to grab and accumulate wealth, to have more technology and bigger houses, and, uh, you know, cars, savings account, because it does not fill you with the happiness. Happiness, when you live a fulfilled life, when you are happy, when you live a joyful life, then yes, it will give you this high vibration. Mm -hmm. So that's about the purpose of life. So this project started as the archaeological discovery, but went into so many life aspects. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what I really like, I believe personally, that there is, a, you could say, uh, an umbrella cosmic field that uh, combines all of our individual knowledge but yes. there is like an, a collective subconscious from which yes. we can draw information yes. and I personally believe that when we combine these things then we can uh, access answers to questions that isolated scientists cannot figure out on their mm. own and what I really like is that you invite people to share their experiences here and you archive these experiences and you even make them accessible for people to look on a website, correct? Yes. 
So yeah, that's really nice. Maybe you can share a little bit more about it's that. It's very important to share, of course. Uh, all my books, I got 18 books. All my books can be read on the different websites for free. Yeah. And Personally, I don't believe in copyrights. I mean, we are just an instrument here. Right. We have our missions in our life and it's up to us you know, how we're going to use that very limited time during this one physical life in this particular body. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the knowledge, the subconscious about the energy fields where knowledge resides, of course we talk about something like Akashic Records or Akasha. That's the notion that in the spiritual realm there is the whole encyclopedia of knowledge yeah. that covers the planetary past and planetary future but also cosmic past and cosmic future. There are people who can tap into this vast area of knowledge, Akashic Record readers. One of my books is actually Experiment with the Six Akashic Record Readers. Mm. Uh, you know, the future of humanity is to combine the physical science with the spiritual science. Physical science, like you, I think, uh, meant had a problem when it comes to the wall, it does not have a fresh idea, maybe from spiritual aspect. It does not receive the clue what to do next. They come to the wall, that's it. Mm. But the physical scientist has to behave like the water. You come to the wall, but then you move, you look for that little crack so you can move on. And those information could come from the spiritual aspect. Exactly. When it comes to spiritual science, unfortunately it is not science yet. It does not apply scientific methodology in spiritual aspect. Today you have many people who can channel information. Mm -hmm. I respect all of them. These guys channel information from the spirits, from different entities, from extraterrestrials, from this star system, from Archangel Michael. I respect everyone. But how do we verify those information? Mm -hmm. You need to apply scientific protocols. You need to compare, you need to have different statements from different people. They, they, don't, they cannot communicate to each other. So once you start receiving information from different sources, you combine them, you can get the common ground. So I would say only when we combine the spiritual science on a new scientific methodology base and Open-minded physical scientists, our society has a good chance to survive. Oh, the way we are doing today, not very good. Come again? The way we are doing it today, not very uh, good. The way, if you just look at a specific uh, yeah, but, angle, yes. I can see that. Yes, as a, but then it's always up to us. Of our destiny is in our hands. You know, sometimes majority of the people think the government is going to solve their problems. Unfortunately, the government is very often cause of the problems, so we expect for them to solve them. It's not very realistic. The whole process should start from us. You know, when I was young and smart, <laughs> I could think that I should change the world. But then the world would not listen. Mm. And as I was getting older and wiser, I realized I should do only one thing. I should change myself. Mm. Because by changing yourself, then you start influencing other people. And then you start changing the world. Yeah, yeah. By changing yourself, you shift your perspective. Yes. So the world becomes a different reflection in return to you. And that's clearly what you're set sending out, which I'm so super grateful for. For this, uh, this is going to be our first video, and uh, we're going to jump to a part two. But uh, thank you so much for this part, and uh, see you in the next one.